Welcome back to Mojo Grip Mike here. I'm still at Pit Patrol and a while ago you guys saw the review of the Sinus and today I'm gonna review the big brother of the Sinus. This is the Virus or spelled Virus. I don't know how Pit Patrol comes up with these names but they stick for sure. And this airplane behind me is also, it uses the same fuselage and the same body as the, the Sinus which is lower powered. The one behind me is if you want better performance okay and you want more options then you go for this one okay stay tuned i'm gonna review it for you so guys here's the pippish show virus spelled v-i-r-u-s uh again i find the names very interesting and i'll, I'll give you a little bit of history about these aircraft and pippish show itself now these models the same ones you saw with the centers they have the same body style these were first produced back in the early 90s okay and the Sinus I believe was the first model and it was created as just a motor glider okay and later became what it is today and when they named the Sinus this is a Slovenia brand and I don't know what the the word means in Slovenia but uh, they had already sold a bunch of these in Europe before they moved uh, to the US market and obviously they realized the pronunciation is pr uh, pronounced sinus or as even virus uh, but they stuck with it anyway but it was too late to sort of just change the name uh, but anyway this is the virus and it has similar body style like I said the wings are shorter and, and the real model name for this is the virus SW okay the wings are shorter but this airplane will outperform just about any other airplanes that you have in the same class okay and i hope you don't mind the noise they're they're doing some manufacturing in here but let me show you guys around all right the first thing you see is that this aircraft has a rotax this is a rotax 912 it's a 100 horsepower engine you can see 912 is so this is a fuel injected engine all right, which can do you a lot of good uh, with the engine itself. Now, again, these uh, model aircraft, the Verus, the Sinus, they're known as the Prius of the skies. And let me share one, one cool stats with you. The Verus will go, will cruise at over 145 knots. 147 to give you, 147 knots. All right, you do a math of that, that's looking close to 170 miles per hour, maybe 160, 170 miles per hour. And guess what? You're only burning about five gallons of fuel going that fast. And that's why this is, look, <laughs> that's why this is experimental because no way in hell the FAA will let you go that fast with a light sport. All right, and you're doing all of that with just a 100 horsepower engine. So like I said, this is more like an upgrade for the Sinus. If you want to step forward and you want to go faster, you want better performance, you just go up 20, 20 more horsepower and you're cruising a lot faster in this thing. And you're still burning a tiny bit of gas, five gallons of fuel per hour. So in this thing, if you actually do the math of the fuel economy, you may be pulling 40, 50 miles per gallon flying one of these. Now, this particular airplane is being worked on. As you can see in here, they're doing some, uh, some work on it. And the Verus comes with a more sophisticated avionics package. You see the Garmin G3X there. Now, being experimental, obviously you can get different uh, options for your avionics, uh, but this one comes equipped with the Garmin G3X Touch, okay? Let's look at the bottom here. Now, as I said with the, with the previous video, these things come standard with a tail wheel. But as you can see, this is a tricycle landing gear. And at least here in the US market, this is how a lot of pilots like to, to buy these. Because you will require more training if you were doing a tail wheel or if you were flying a tail wheel. Okay? Let's, let's just go around it for a minute. And again, I apologize for the noise. But this is, these are some of the things you got to deal with. <laughs> All right. Let's do a 360. 
see the leading edge of the, the wings here. I don't think I've seen this before. See how it curves, it curves down. Uh, a lot of the wings that I see actually is the opposite. It curves up. So I'm not sure why the design is like that, but it is. You see this is curving down. All right. Big old flaps or ailerons here. I don't see it. Usually you have your flaps and your ailerons. I see a cutting edge there. Not sure what that is. So let's keep going around. Again, if you look at the body and the design of this fuselage, it's pretty much the same with the centers. Uh, same space in the cabin. Um, and you see there the empennage with the T-tail. Let's see here. There you go, T-tail right there. The rudder here, elevators up top. Okay. Now, with this particular model, with the Varus, you are going to pay a little bit more. Uh, the Cenus starts around $125,000. Uh, the Varus will cost you about $20,000 more to start with. And then depending on the, uh, the upgrades you get, and a lot of things does come standard with this airplane. For example, the parachute. I think the parachute is, a stand, uh, is an option, but the brakes, remember I showed you this earlier in the other video. So these are right here, the air brakes. And this typically is an option, but with this aircraft, uh, I was told that this comes standard. All right, I would double check on that, but you do get the standard for the Varus. And you see behind it, you do have the parachute. Okay, the BRS right there. And this is GRS, but this is your parachute there. The pull, let me get the camera on it. That's the parachute pull. So I like the gray and green. I don't think I've seen this uh, combination before. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna take a picture of this because it looks really neat. Gray, green, and orange. I really like that. Uh, giving me some ideas. All right, but you see the cabin space in here. It's it's about 44 inches. Okay, you have about 44 inches of cabin space. And let me go on the other side and show you. And this, unlike the uh, Cenus, is a three-bladed prop. Now, again, being experimental, you do have options. All right, and look at that. What do you see there? Well, we're familiar with this uh, with this brand. It's the Airmaster prop. And let me show you what's cool about using Airmaster. If you look in the interior here, this is what's beautiful about the propeller. It's electronically controlled, which means you just switch this to whatever stages of flight that you're in. If you're taking off, you put it to take off. When you're climbing, you put it to climb. When you're cruising, you just switch to cruise. And a computer does everything else for you. So that's the most beautiful thing about using an Airmaster for power. All right? And again, the designing here. Now, I didn't talk so much about the, uh, the baggage compartment in these airplanes, but you do have one. Um, you can put up to 80 pounds, I believe. I'm gonna check on that. Check the description so I can fact check that. And to get to the baggage area, you pull the seat, the vet crawls. All right, you pull this and you have access to your baggage compartment back there. All right, and these are really neat. So easy, easy in and out for these things. Um, again, I don't want to touch anything too much in here because they are working on this uh, airplane and you see the panel is out here. Um, but this is an awful glass. The only thing that are round gauges that you see here are these two up here. So those are probably your backup, but everything else is full glass as you can see. And another thing I didn't mention in the Cinus review is this here. This is how you check your fuel level, which is typical of high wings. A lot of high wings have these. Okay, this is what you generally uh, use for your uh, fuel gauge. 
so you just look right up there and you have it now I haven't flown in this but it's similar to uh, flying in a Cenis which we just flew or, or which we flew earlier now generally speaking you cannot train in this model because it is experimental so legally you can't use it to train people to get certification for anything but if you were to buy one of these uh, you would have to train in the certified LSA version and then you would do a check ride uh, or you get checked out in, in this in the Varus and you're good to go okay now as I said before the pricing uh, these starts around $140,000 uh, the mission that you would use this airplane for really is cross-country. This airplane is not no uh, newbie to speed. This thing can go really fast and it can go really fast at an economical price. <laughs> when you're pulling 160 to 170 miles per hour and you're only burning five gallons of fuel. So this airplane is a cross-country airplane and it is an option for those who are out there looking for something uh, in this class and the really cool thing also is that uh pipistrel is coming out with an electric version of these so look out for that it might be at oshkosh later this year uh but we'll we'll see i'm gonna be there so hopefully we'll get to see it but here it is guys this is the pipistrel virus i hope you guys enjoy this one if you did please give it a thumbs up all right and if this is your first time be sure to hit the subscribe button for me and I will catch you all on the next video.